In this portion of administering medications, we'll be talking about nasogastric intubation. The most common time you're going to be tubing a horse is for colic reasons, and you're either going to be passing the tube to reflux the horse if they have too much stomach contents because horses are not able to vomit, so we need to actually pass the tube in there and relieve that pressure off of the stomach. The other reason you might be doing that is to administer things like oral fluids or mineral oil when they're colicking to try to loosen up their stool. So we have a couple of different types of tubes and types and sizes of tubes. I keep them in my bucket here in the water. When they're just sitting in the water, it just kind of softens them up a little bit and makes it a little easier to pass. Right here I have two different sizes. There's a medium tube here and then a large tube here. You can tell the difference of the size here. I typically, if it's the first time I'm seeing the horse and the horse is colicking, I'll use the large tube because it's easier just to lavage anything out of their stomach. For demonstration purposes today, I'm just going to use the medium tube. So I get the tube here and what I like to do is just put the tube around my neck like that. Just get the kinks out of it a little bit. And then I'm just going to grab some lube here just to make it pass easier through her nose. Just apply it to the end there. Okay, and then we're ready to go. So I have my handler again on the same side. Come up here, just nice and slow. I'll grab her nostril. Just kind of rub the inside of her nose here, just letting her know I'm here. So then I'm going to start passing the tube, and it's important to keep in mind that you want the tube to be ventral and medial, so down into like to the inside here, so you can avoid the ethmoids up here, which if you do hit those, they often will get a nosebleed. And when you're passing the tube, you can tell, see that my handler is kind of pulling her nose down here and flexing her head, and that gives you a better shot of going in the esophagus rather than if their neck's extended, you'll go right into their trachea. So here I'm ready. I'm just going to slowly start passing the tube. And you can use your right hand here. I'm using my middle finger just to push the tube down. And as you're passing it, just always feel for any resistance. And you may need to redirect. So then I'm to her pharynx here. And you can feel, and you can also watch their throat there and watch for them to swallow. And once you feel the swallow, you pass the tube. And you can see it often see it going down the esophagus and it does have a different feel. It's a little bit tighter going down the esophagus as if you went in the trachea. Often you'll feel it kind of bounce off the rings and a lot of times if you're in the trachea they will start to cough. Now coughing, they often can cough when you're in the right spot but that's just one of the signs. So at this point I'm just going to put the end of the tube in my mouth and just apply a little bit of suction and I am getting negative pressure. So that's another indication that I'm in the right spot. I'm in the esophagus. If you were in the trachea, you'd just get a constant um, flow of air. So what I do now is I usually just hold the tube in my mouth, and I'll just blow on the tube as I pass it down just to kind of help open up the esophagus and then get in. You can tell when you're into the stomach. And now I'm in the stomach, and you can often, in this case, you can hear the gas, and you can smell that that definitely smells like stomach contents in your stomach there. So now that you're in the stomach, we have all the signs that we should be in the stomach and not in the trachea. You always first want to put water through the tube, because if you were confused and maybe in the trachea instead, water's the most harmless thing you can put in. So we'll just grab the bucket here, and this can just catch the contents of our stomach and the water that we put in just to lavage the stomach out. So then I'll have an assistant come here and hold the bucket, or if you are in a stall like this, you can sometimes just clip it onto the stall door. So this metal pump here, I'll just pump the water in, and it fits snugly onto the end of this tube. So I'll put usually eight pumps of water in here. 
And then when you disconnect the tube here, you don't always get a siphon right away like that. Something that you can try to do is just put a little pressure on the tube and try to start to get uh, feed contents from the stomach. And you can see there that there were a little bit of feed particles in there. And if all you were doing is giving a medication, that would probably be enough to confirm that you're in the stomach, and you can go ahead and give a medication. But if you are concerned about colic or reflux and you need to lavage the stomach, you would keep going, and often you're, you'll use one to two full buckets of water, trying to get any of that sour feed or anything out of there. So in this case, I'm just going to give her a little bit more water just to simulate that I was giving her a medication. So I'm going to do a few pumps here. And then when I'm done, I'll just disconnect here. And then I'll just blow through the medication through the end of the syringe. Kink it off so nothing comes back. And then you can go ahead and pull the tube. And you want to make sure their heads, keep them nice and quiet when you're doing this. Because you can, when you get through their nose, it can flick up and give them a bloody nose at that time, too. So you just pull it out nice and slowly. And that concludes how to give a medication by a nasogastric tube.